So Joe Biden just recently uh, released his $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill or relief uh, plan, I guess I should say, where he calls on Congress to enact a variety of uh, measures in order to give the American people some relief. So we're going to go ahead and play some clips here for you. We will finish the job of getting a total of $2,000 in cash relief to people who need it the most. The $600 already appropriated is simply not enough. We'll also provide more peace of mind for struggling families by extending unemployment insurance beyond the end of March for millions of workers. That means that 18 million Americans currently run on unemployment benefits while they look for work can count on these checks continuing to be there. Plus, there will be a $400 per week supplement so people can make ends meet. So we're going to extend emergency nutritional assistance for, 30, for 43 million children and their families enrolled in the SNAP program through the rest of this year. Next week, we'll take action to extend nationwide restrictions on evictions and foreclosures. Our rescue plan will provide flexible grants to help those hardest hit small businesses survive the pandemic and the low cost capital that will help entrepreneurs of all backgrounds create and maintain jobs, plus provide the essential goods and services that communities depend upon. Like an increase in the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour. People tell me that's going to be hard to pass. Florida just passed it. As divided as that state is, they just passed it. The rest of the country is ready to move as well. It should be a national minimum wage of $15 an hour. All right. So let's go ahead and break this down a little bit. Um, I liked what he said, uh, f- you know, mostly for sure. I definitely think that it's pretty obvious we are in a situation right now where we need some serious economic relief. Uh, that is the largest crisis I think that any president has had to walk into office with is dealing with the, the financial and just the COVID crisis that we're dealing with right now. And he did talk about also in his speech that he's going to you know ramp up vaccinations. He wants to get 100 million Americans vaccinated in the first 100 days of office. Um, I do know that the health department has now recommended that anybody over the age of 65 receive the vaccine. I think that's obviously the way to go. Once everybody who's in the vulnerable categories gets the vaccine, we can go back to normal. Uh, I don't know if the media is going to say that to us. I don't know if they're or, or if they're going to continue on with, no, everybody must be vaccinated. Uh, everybody, you know, but the reality of it is, is that once you vaccinate those who are at risk of getting sick, at risk of being hospitalized and at risk of death, then everybody else can go back to normal. The majority of people, the youth, the, you know, the children and the younger adults, they don't feel any symptoms or their symptoms are very mild. So I don't think there's any reason to have to vaccinate all of them. Once you get the elderly vaccinated, we're good to go. So that could be good if in the first 100 days he does actually pull that off. Um, so he's saying he's going to ramp up those checks so that everybody gets the $2,000, which is what um, the Democrats wanted. Well, and some Republicans wanted it. They were kind of originally, it was, I believe, Bernie Sanders and Josh Hawley, the one that everybody wants to kick out of Congress now. They were the ones that were going for the $2,000. And then it was, you know, there was a bunch of squabbling about that. He's saying he's he's wanting to extend unemployment benefits and also include that $400 federal assistance uh, amount. So if you are in a state and you're receiving unemployment, then you would ad- receive an additional $400 a week from the federal government. For a lot of people, that was actually more money than they were making um, when they were working. I I know that because I know people personally who uh, took, you know, who were benefiting from that and they did not have to go to work because actually their unemployment benefits were more money than they were making when they were working. So there is some, you know, there were Republicans that complained about that and said, this will make it to where people don't want to go back to work. And um there's some merit in that argument because I know people personally who absolutely refused to go back to work, even when their employers were begging them to come back to work, even when their work was outdoors and there was really very little risk to them. And even though they were very young and they were healthy and they were not around anybody older, you know, there's really no reason for them not to go back to work. They were saying, I don't need to because I'm making $500 more a month from unemployment than going to work for you. So that was something that... Um, was a real thing. But nonetheless, for many people, I know at a time in my life, I had to go on unemployment. 
and it was peanuts and four hundred dollars a week would have been absolutely beneficial though it still would not have made up for what i was making um he's saying he's going to increase snap benefits he's also saying he's going to ask for um, a moratorium on evictions i have a little bit so i have a love-hate relationship with that because so my situation is i'm surrounded by airbnbs and i don't know how that's legal during a pandemic for airbnbs i mean i'm telling you most of my neighbors are airbnb units at this point and i've had during this pandemic a slew of people coming in and out of my building and sharing my hall and sharing my elevators with me for the entire duration of the pandemic i mean travelers coming in renting the airbnbs coughing up in my elevators they you know no one ever wears masks um and so we've asked management over and over to evict these the person who owns all these airbnbs we got one guy who owns like 17 airbnbs in my complex i don't know how he was able to do that and we've asked for an eviction so that we can not have strangers coming in every week during a pandemic and it's the the eviction moratorium makes that um impossible so there's kind of like a benefit to the eviction because there's a lot of people who are unable to pay rent my best friend's one of them she's unable to pay her rent right now and thank goodness there's an eviction moratorium because um otherwise management would try to kick her out so for her it's a good thing and she also lives in my building but uh surrounding me my unit specifically a bunch of airbnb so it's bad in that way you know so it's got it got it's it's got it's good and it's bad but he says he also wants to give rent relief, um, which is absolutely necessary. We've got a lot of people out there, and that, I think, is one of the biggest things that needs to happen. Actually, first and foremost, is rent and mortgage relief. And then he says he wants to do grants for small businesses to keep them going um, or loans. But, you know, loans are rough because you take out a loan if you want to expand your business or upgrade your business or start your business, but you don't take out a loan or anticipate going into massive debt when it comes to um, a disaster like this to try to keep yourself going and how to pay that off and keep your business going. For a lot of businesses, they say that's not possible. And so they just end up closing shop. And he also calls for a $15 an hour minimum wage nationwide. Um, I already see the comments on that. A lot of people are saying, oh, this is going to tank. This is going to tank businesses. $15 an hour minimum wage. How can Joe Biden call for a $15 hour minimum wage? This is going to kill jobs. This is a job killer. That is baloney, people, because that is the exact same argument that has been used throughout history when they wanted to end slavery they said oh this will kill businesses we won't have any you know you're the price of your goods are going to go way up and they these going to kill businesses when they wanted to end child labor uh they the same the same thing the people that wanted to end child labor said we got to end child labor and the business owner said oh this is going to raise up the price of goods and we're not, and this is going to crumble econ the economy and that didn't happen and you know same thing for when they wanted to go to a 40 hour work week and they wanted to put measures in for 40 hour work weeks oh this is going to kill jobs they've used this argument forever and ever and ever on everything and it's never been true so I cannot imagine that today, raising up the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour, which is not enough to live a life of luxury, you know, that is just enough to have a basic, decent life if you're working a job that is blue collar. If you are working a blue collar job in this country, you should be able to support yourself, your wife and your three kids or your husband and your three kids, or whatever, or your, your spouse and your two dogs, you should be able to do that with a blue collar job and you're not able to do that in America anymore. And that is actually the crux of our problem. The biggest issue we have in this country is the fact that blue collar workers are unable to achieve the American dream. So a $15 hour minimum wage is a minimum wage and most people should be making more than that, especially if they live in cities such as Los Angeles or Chicago or San Francisco or New York or Washington, D.C. And in other areas of the country, 15 bucks an hour. What does that even get you? Let's calculate that out. What is $15 an hour? So if you work, if you get 15 bucks an hour 
40 hours a week, that's $600 a week, right? And, uh, you know, you're talking 2,400 bucks a month. Yeah, I think if you're working a full-time job, $2,400 a month is uh, still not enough to support your family. You would need two of you to to be able to support a family. I'm, I'm thinking about Boise, Idaho, where my family is. Even a one-bedroom apartment now, there is half of that, you know, so... And that's for a one bedroom. I mean, if you need a two or a three bedroom to support your family, that's going to eat up a huge chunk of that. And you won't and you're still going to be having a tough time buying food and paying a car, you know, so yeah, 15 bucks an hour, I think is, I, you know, we can do it. The people that say we can't do it. No, you just study some history. We can do it. That argument has never held up. It's never been valid no matter the times that it's been used, and it's been used over and over and over again. So yes, $15 an hour minimum wage, we need that at least. And then in areas like Los Angeles and New York and these bigger cities, they need to raise that up to about 25.